Hey, welcome back to Spellbound. I'm BJ the Book Witch, and today we're talking about how to read the classics without feeling like a failure. So we all know the classics. These are the books that everybody wants to have read, but nobody wants to read. Or so says Mark Twain. So why read them at all? After all, we know that the classics are part of a white, male-dominated canon meant to indoctrinate Western minds into a colonized worldview within the capitalistic hellscape we find ourselves in today. But ignoring the classics entirely would totally be throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Just because all that is true doesn't mean that the classics are inherently harmful or lacking literary merit. Not at all. The classics, as vague and as loose as that term is, can apply to a huge spectrum of books, plays, and poetry. And above all, their art. So they're worth reading for their artistic and literary value. My whole reason in pointing out the framework to our canon of classics is just to say that just because we have the classics doesn't mean that nothing else is worth scholarly attention or that the books that you typically may read have no merit or legitimacy. You should read whatever makes you happy. But with that being said, if you are looking to dip into the classics and you're not really sure how to go about it, then I hope that this list of tips can help you. The classics can be intimidating. Reading anything from another time period, regardless of the symbolic or literary value behind it, is challenging. So I hope that this list of practical tips will help you feel a little more comfortable and confident when you go try out your next book. Tip one, choose a book that you honestly think that you'll like, not one that you think you should read. If this isn't for school or for an assignment and there's no test at the end, then there's nobody to impress. This is for you and you alone, so you should find a book that fits you. Two, don't grab the most beautiful, best looking collector's edition of a book you've never read. You don't even know if you're gonna like it yet. Skip the hard bound vintage frayed edges, tiny print ones and go for the cheap paperbacks, the ugly covered scholastic editions, the no fear Shakespeare and study guides. Those are the ones you're gonna want. Three, don't jump into it cold. Personally, I love diving into books with absolutely zero context, but I would never do this for a classic. For me, I understand classics a lot better when I'm able to immerse myself in the time period. So read a couple of paragraphs on Wikipedia about the author. Watch the movie, if there is one. Check out the loosely adapted TV series. Get a feel for the clothes that they wore and the way that they spoke. It'll make the reading experience a lot easier because you'll already be somewhat familiar with the mechanics of the plot, so you'll be able to better appreciate the language and the beauty of the writing itself. Four, be flexible with the medium. Nobody said it had to be the original official text. Try the graphic novel version or listen to the audiobook. Pick up an illustrated or abridged children's book adaptation. There are no rules, live your life. Five. Don't be afraid or embarrassed by reading aids. No Fear Shakespeare exists because the world needs it. It's okay. Cliss Notes, Spark Notes, Wikipedia, whatever helps you better understand and appreciate the text, use it. Six, go slow. Take your time. Read one paragraph at a time, one sentence at a time. There's no test and there's no time limit. So really allow yourself to slow your normal reading pace and absorb the language. Seven, read aloud. The prose of older time periods has a rhythm that modern writing doesn't. And often reading aloud can help you capture that rhythm and glide along. Eight, annotate, take notes. There are no rules to note-taking or what you should specifically be looking for. Do you really like that description of the flower? Underline it, confused by that line of dialogue? question mark it. Come back to it the next day or even look it up, but you'll retain more if you're actively engaged in the text. Nine, talk about it or buddy read. Read it with a friend or talk about the book with someone who's already read it. You'll be able to see things through another reader's perspective and that is so helpful when reading literature. And finally, have fun with it. If you find yourself struggling through a book because you find the author really boring, that's okay. Chances are, they're probably really boring. I'm not saying there's no merit to their work, but they just might not be for you. Remember, reading should be fun, so if you're not having fun, just try another book. Here's a list of some of my personal favorite classics. Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. 
Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, also by Robert Louis Stevenson, Peter Pan by J. M. Barry, Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll, A Christmas Story by Charles Dickens, The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou, The, the Great Gatsby by S. Scott Fitzgerald, The Hound of the Baskervilles by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, and Then There Were None by Agatha Christie, and We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson, Anne of Green Gables by Lucy Maud Montgomery, and The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. And please keep in mind that this list is primarily white American or English authors published within the last 150, 200 years or so. So this is not at all a comprehensive list of classics or even suggestions or recommendations. It's just the list of my personal favorite classics that I love to read multiple times. So that's it for me, but what about you? What are some of your favorite classics and what time periods do you enjoy reading in? Do you have any tips for reading unfamiliar material? Let me know down in the comments. And thanks so much for sticking around. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you loved it, hit subscribe. And of course, there is always Instagram. Either way, take care and as always, happy reading.